Good morning and welcome to another May ISM Lunch and Learn webinar. Today we're going to be talking about Sage Alerts and Workflow. And here to present for us is Mr. Don Farber from Vineyard Soft, the producer of this product. A little bit of housekeeping before we begin. We will keep the lines muted throughout the presentation and we will open them up at the end for questions. If a question does come up during the presentation, please feel free to use the question pane or the chat window. We will address them when available. Thank you very much, and with that, I'm turning everything over to Don. Don, thank you and welcome. Thanks very much, Shari. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for spending some time with me today to learn about Sage Alerts and Workflow, and specifically, how to make your organization more data-driven. Just to give you an idea of how we're going to spend time together today, the first 18 or 20 minutes is going to be a business-level overview, talking about this philosophy of becoming more data-driven, talking about the alerts and workflow technology, um, and we'll even touch upon licensing and pricing, after which we'll jump into the alerts and workflow application itself for about 15 to 18 or so minutes to give you a live product demo so that you can get a sense for how the product looks and operates. We will leave time at the end for Q&A and just a final comments, uh, final few comments from myself before we kick things off. And that is that if you'd like a copy of this presentation of the PowerPoint I'm going to go through, feel free to uh, let me or Sherry know. We'll get that into your hands. And finally, <clears throat> pardon me, as I go through my slides, I tend not to read them to you because I figure you can read them as well as I can read them to you. Rather, I'll typically touch upon just a couple of subjects, a couple of key items on each slide. So let's start, uh, start into it. So with ERP solutions today, there is a lot of information that you're tracking, storing, and you need to stay on top of from receivables, payables, inventory, purchase orders, et cetera. And in order to stay on top of it today, you probably run a combination of queries, reports, and analyses to identify important actionable data. Uh, typically, we get a report dumped on our desk in paper format. We page through it, page at a time. Uh, identifying just those items that require our attention. Now, what we're talking about here is going from that model to what we call the data-driven model. And the data-driven model, very specifically, is an environment to, whereby you've empowered your Sage ERP system to proactively monitor itself, to look for critical, time-sensitive business conditions according to your organization, of course, and then automatically deliver the needed information to the appropriate people and even automatically execute the appropriate response actions. What we're talking about here is moving from what I call the yellow highlighter approach, and you know what that means. You open up your top desk drawer and you've got at least one uh, yellow highlighter pen in there, moving to the data-driven approach where you're not having to go out looking for data that data is coming to you based upon your needs. So when it comes to the value or the need to become data-driven, what you really have to ask yourself is the following question. Can the delay of a week, an hour, or even a few minutes in responding to critical business conditions and activities in your Sage ERP application Tell the difference between success and failure or between satisfied and dissatisfied customers. And so a really good way of identifying and answering that question is to ask yourself the following. When was the last time in your daily business activities you felt like saying, if only we had known? If only we had known that these clients of ours were so far past due, we would have sent them copies of their invoices, a copy of their statement. We would have put them on credit hold. We would have done something. If only we had known about these leases or contracts that were about to expire, we would have reached out to the appropriate vendor or supplier and renewed them. If only we had known that these good clients from ours, clients who purchase month after month after month, all of a sudden have stopped buying from us. It is exactly these if only we had known scenarios. If you've ever experienced them, then you're an organization that can benefit from taking a more data-driven approach 
in response to your SAGE ERP data. Now let's drill down into this concept of data-driven just a little bit further. How do you know specifically if your organization needs to become more data-driven? Well, if you answer yes to at least two of the following criteria, that qualifies you. So question number one, do you have a lot of date-sensitive data, such as due dates, expiration dates, promise dates, delivery dates, discount dates, etc.? Do you need to monitor these dates and respond to them accordingly or take actions based upon them? Do you have critical business thresholds, uh, a vendor who's had more than X late deliveries, a sales rep who's had too many orders whose gross profit has been below a certain threshold? Do you have certain activities within your business that should happen but sometimes don't, such as a customer who buys from you month after month but hasn't, an item in inventory that has not moved in over X days, weeks, or months? Do you as an organization focus on exception management? And I love the concept of exception management because it's a thought process that says, don't tell me about everything that's going right in my company. Tell me only about those things that are going wrong because that's what I need to know about and act on. Do you as an organization rely upon trend analysis? Do you need to know when a customer is purchasing a lot more or a lot less, for example, than they used to? And do you need to know when certain data in your Sage ERP application has changed? A change to a customer's credit limit or credit status, uh, the change to an expected delivery date uh, of a purchase order uh, that you've placed with a specific vendor or supplier. And finally, you should consider adopting a data-driven approach to your business if you have one or more manual repetitive processes that could be automated. And by this, they typically revolve around document delivery. Uh, how do you generate and deliver invoices and statements to your customers, purchase orders to your suppliers, order confirmations or delivery confirmations, picking tickets, dunning notices. Are those processes currently reliant upon being done manually? Because if so, a data-driven approach enables you to, mo to automate those processes. So when we talk about being data-driven, you really need to do just two things within your organization. First, you need to automate the process whereby you're monitoring your Sage ERP business data to automatically trigger alerts and workflow based upon conditions and activities and thresholds being met. And secondly, you need to take those processes like invoicing and statement generation and delivery that are currently being done manually and automate them. These two items collectively enable you to achieve that data-driven approach. So the technology from Sage called Alerts and Workflow is what enables your organization to become data-driven. And uh, the analogy that I like to use for Alerts and Workflow is that of a smoke detector for your business data. You tell Alerts and Workflow what business conditions you want it to watch for, overdue invoices, low stock, a change to a customer's credit limit. You tell it what to do when those situations occur, you turn it on and you walk away from it. It operates like a smoke detector in a completely automated fashion. And as a really good example of that, there are currently somewhere between 12,000 and 13,000 customers worldwide using alerts and workflow to achieve this data-driven approach. And our support staff receives fewer than nine incoming support requests a day. Most customers who own this technology contact us but once a year to renew their annual maintenance and support. And over the years it's been around, Alerts and Workflow has been the recipient of numerous awards and commendations. I won't bore you by going through them, but I will point out the very last one on the current slide, Forbes. An organization who know a thing or two about business awarded Alerts and Workflow its commendation for top productivity enhancing tool. And if there's one thing that we're all striving for, it's to increase our productivity. So let me paint for you the four basic components of Sage Alerts and Workflow. It begins by automatically monitoring your Sage ERP application for any 
business conditions that are important to you. And that last statement bears repeating. Any business conditions that are important to you. Oop, let me jump back for a moment. You can see about uh, four or five of them listed up at the top of the slide, new orders, overdue invoices, et cetera. But whether it's uh, um, sales that are being placed with a gross margin that's too low, whether it's the automatic identification of duplicate items, such as duplicate uh, records uh, in uh, inventory or elsewhere, any condition that's important to you can be monitored and responded to by alerts and workflow. Those responses uh, include sending alerts. And those alerts can be sent via any method you can imagine. Oops, sorry, I seem to have a, a, a hot finger on the trigger button there. So uh, let's talk about alerts and workflow a little bit more. People always assume email, and yes, email is the most common alert delivery method, but alerts and workflow can also send out via text message to a cell phone by dynamic web dashboard, just popping up information right in front of you on your screen so you don't even have to go into email to see those alerts. And also, very importantly, these alerts can include graphic alerts. You know, we talked about trend analysis and notifying an account manager or a salesperson about a customer who's changed their buying habits. Well, if you're going to alert a salesperson about a change to a customer's buying trends, probably the most important thing you can put in front of that sales rep is a nice looking line chart that says, here are the month to month sales of this customer. And you can see for the month just ended, their sales dropped by 20, 25 or 30 percent. Okay. Now, when we were talking about uh, becoming data-driven, one of the items we kept on coming back to was automating the process whereby standard forms and documents are automatically generated and delivered uh, for you, such as invoices and statements and purchase orders. But in truth, all of your standard documents, as well as all of your analytical reports, can be automatically generated and delivered by alerts and workflow. You have, for example, a daily stock status report or a weekly AR aging report or an AP check reconciliation report. Those can all be automatically generated and delivered to the appropriate recipients by alerts and workflow. But I'll tell you what I really like about this module, and that is something called triggered reports. Let's take your AR aging report as an example. You might run that report once a week, and maybe that's sufficient frequency. But you might also say, you know, if ever one of our clients gets more than 90 days past due with over $10,000 worth of receivables, at that moment, I want alerts and workflow to generate my AR aging report for that client and send that report to that client's account manager or sales rep. Triggered reports, a very cool bit of functionality. And then the final component of alerts and workflow is truly the workflow component, because it's very important to note, this product is not called Sage Alerts. It's called Sage Alerts and Workflow. So what do we mean by that and workflow? Well, how about using Sage Alerts and Workflow to identify when a customer becomes past due, and not only resend them copies of their invoices and their statement, but how about going back into the Sage ERP application and putting that customer on credit hold so no additional sales orders are allowed for them? Or if an item in the inventory is approaching its reorder level, let's have alerts and workflow go into Sage ERP and actually create a purchase order for that item and have alerts and workflow deliver that purchase order to the corresponding vendor. That's what we mean by workflow. So when you consider all of the data that you're storing within Sage ERP and, and the various conditions that that data can sit in, whether it's overdue customers, late deliveries from vendors, orders with unacceptably low profit margins, what you see on the right-hand side of the current slide is exactly what alerts and workflow can do automatically in response to those conditions. So once again, we're talking about using alerts and workflow to empower your Sage ERP application to automatically monitor itself and take the appropriate response actions based upon those conditions occurring. Okay, <clears throat> pardon me. So. One thing I'd like to mention about alerts and workflow is the fact that it's not just a tool. We're not just providing you with a tool set to say, okay, now go off and figure out what types of business conditions you want to monitor for. 
alerts and workflow comes pre-configured with, as you can see, anywhere from 30 to 100 pre-configured events. We call these event packs. And so regardless of what Sage ERP application you're using, alerts and workflow comes with a pre-configured collection of alert and workflow scenarios. These come with the application at no additional cost. And oh, by the way, if you happen to be using any other business applications, not only from Sage, but even from other application vendors, chances are that alerts and workflow has event packs, collections of pre-configured alerts and workflows for those applications as well. Now, before we get into the application itself, it's certainly worth discussing how it's licensed and priced. So, just a few minutes on that. Alerts and workflow is not licensed per user. Doesn't matter how many users you have in your Sage ERP application. Rather, alerts and workflow is priced according to the number of applications you wish it to monitor and respond to. So let's take this from the top. Let's say that you're interested in using Sage Alerts and Workflow to monitor your Sage ERP application. When I say Sage ERP application, I'm talking all modules, AR, AP, inventory, purchasing, sales orders, GL, et cetera. And we're also talking an unlimited number of companies within your Sage ERP application. So that we consider monitoring a single application or one connection, as we call it. Let's say that you want to be able to define and utilize an unlimited number of events to send alerts to an unlimited number of people, not just your own employees and staff, but your customers, your prospects, your vendors and suppliers. You want those alerts, <clears throat> pardon me again, to be delivered via any device or method, email, fax, text message to a cell phone, a uh, dynamic web dashboard, chart, or graph. And you also want the ability for alerts and workflow to go back into your Sage ERP application and trigger or execute workflow, such as putting a delinquent customer on credit hold, such as creating a purchase order for an item that's nearing its reorder level. For all of that functionality, you would be looking at a one-time license cost of just under $3,300. And by the way, that's for what we call a perpetual license, a license that never expires. Now, I do need to make a couple of comments about that price. Number one is that there is annual maintenance and support fees of roughly 20%. So for this license, uh, $3,295, there is an additional charge of $650 on an annual basis, which covers your maintenance and support. Also, uh, I mentioned that this is for what we call a perpetual license. If you prefer to license in a subscription or month by month uh, manner, that is also supported and we can provide you pricing on that. But let's jump down to the bottom part of this slide just to talk about options. Your options are, number one, you've got an additional application, such as a CRM or an HR application that you also wish to monitor. To do that, <clears throat> excuse me, an additional $17.99. To monitor two additional applications, such as a CRM and an HR application, that's twice that. And once you reach a grand total of monitoring four, applications for connections as we call it we automatically grant you what's called the unlimited connection or unlimited application monitoring license which enables you to monitor every single business application that you own today or ever will own and by the way that also covers monitoring both incoming email and your operating system in addition to all of your application data okay so a couple of years back, we did a return on investment study of roughly uh, 1,100 customers to calculate how quickly they were able to pay off their investment in alerts and workflow. It turned out that the average payback period was just under three months at 88 days. Now we have up a, a rather brief customer case study here, which I'm not gonna take the time to go into in detail. I will draw your attention down to the last two items on the current slide that talk about ROI. This particular customer was able to quantify savings of over 100 staff hours every month 
through the virtue of automating so many processes that were currently being done manually and corresponding benefit just in terms of automating collections, they were able to increase their monthly accounts receivable collections by roughly $11,000. Okay. So you've now got an idea for what the application can do. Functionally, you've got an idea for how it's licensed and priced. And so with that, I'd like to jump into the product itself. So I'm just going to minimize my PowerPoint slide. And wait a minute. Didn't mean to click on that. Let's go back. Sorry about that. I seem to, uh, again, have a bit of an itchy trigger finger. So let's go to our alerts and workflow application. Here we are. So a couple of words in general about alerts and workflow. Number one, it's a server-based application. That means you typically install it on just one machine within your IT environment. It does not need to be on a dedicated server. You could put it on your Sage ERP server, on your SQL server, on your Exchange server, or even run it on a workstation, which is what I'm demoing it to you from today. Alerts and Workflow runs under any Windows-based operating system, so that makes that a mercifully brief conversation. And Alerts and Workflow stores its data in a choice of database formats, our preferred database format being Microsoft SQL Server, but we also support other formats such as SQL Express and even Microsoft Access. Some folks ask, well, why access? And our answer is so that you can download and try out alerts and workflow without having to bother your database administrator. So the way alerts and workflow operates is you begin by pointing it at or telling it about the various applications and modules that you wish it to monitor. Now note, for today, the module or the application that I'm going to focus on specifically is Sage 100. But everything that I'm showing you applies equally to all other ERP applications, whether from Sage or even from other application vendors. You'll notice that I am also monitoring a couple of uh, non-ERP applications, my Sage CRM or sales application, as well as a human resource application as well. The way Alerts and Workflow operates is that you begin by telling it about the applications or modules you wish it to monitor, and you then identify the various business conditions that you want it to monitor for. Now, this is a long list, and it is a long list because these are some of the over 85 pre-configured business conditions that Alerts and Workflow ships with out of the box. So when you see a list like this, know that you don't have to set it up. This is just part of what comes with the product, so you can activate it typically in roughly four or so hours. It's a very quick implementation process. But what I'd like to do for our demonstration today is let's pick on a specific event and show you how Alerts and Workflow operates. Because once you tell it about the specific business conditions you want it to monitor for and how you wish it to respond to those conditions, you quite literally turn it on. It runs as a Windows service, so you turn on alerts and workflow, you walk away from it, and it sits there like a smoke detector for your corporate data, monitoring and responding to your critical business conditions as they occur. Now, speaking about critical business conditions, honestly, I can't think of perhaps a more important condition than staying on top of your customer's receivables. So for today's time, we're gonna focus in on this particular event called invoices that are overdue. Now, every event in Alerts and Workflow has up to five components, and you can see them listed out to the right. The first of those components is telling me whether or not this event is active. Am I currently monitoring for this condition? And if so, how often? By cursoring over this branch, we can see that this event is running every day at nine o'clock in the morning. Now in truth, if I drill down into that frequency, I'd actually see that it's running only on work days, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m because in our case, we have no one in the office on Saturdays or Sundays, so there's no reason to be checking for business conditions during those dates. Now, every event can have its own schedule. Very uh, time-sensitive business conditions, such as inventory levels, well, you might wish to monitor for those every hour, every few minutes, or even continuously. 
and those business conditions that are somewhat less time sensitive, such as identifying customer buying trends, those you might check maybe weekly, monthly, or even quarterly. Now the second component of every event is its query, and this is what identifies the underlying business conditions that we want this event to monitor for. Here, Alerts and Workflow is looking at invoices that are overdue and have an outstanding balance of at least $100. Maybe you want to change that. For you, $100 too little. You want to change that to $500 or maybe even $1,000. Based upon authorizations that you control, you can specify who can get into alerts and workflow and who can not only create events like this one, but modify them, such as we're doing right here. Now, I'm going to spend just a moment longer talking about the query in an, uh, an alert, excuse me, in an alert event in alerts and workflow. Let's say that you say, well, Don, this is good, but we need to exclude certain customers from this logic. How easy or difficult is it for me as a non-technical person to either create or modify these queries? Well, let me answer that question for you here. You don't have to be a programmer. You are not writing SQL syntax or, or some kind of programming code. But in order to create or customize your alerts and workflow queries, you do need to be familiar with an application's database schema. In plain English, you need to know what data is stored where. If you've ever written a crystal report for your Sage ERP application, I guarantee you, you have all the technical expertise you need. Here, Alerts and Workflow automatically presents me with a list of all of the files or tables in my Sage ERP database. Down at the bottom of this tab, I've chosen what tables I wish to retrieve data from. First and foremost, I'm looking at my AR open invoices. If I skip ahead a couple of tabs to my columns tab, I'm able to identify the individual fields of data that I wish to retrieve from these underlying invoices, such as the invoice number, the date of the invoice, its due date, the current balance on the invoice, and so on. You want to get more sophisticated here? No problem. Maybe we want to total up all of the outstanding invoices per customer, per region, per sales rep. You have access to additional calculation wizards from here and from up here. Add calculated column to query. All of this, once again, achievable without any programming or technical knowledge. Let's jump ahead a couple more tabs. The Filters tab is where we're able to specify exactly what conditions we want this query to monitor for. And this query has two filters. The first one is looking at the invoices balance because, well, we're probably only interested in those invoices that have an outstanding balance of more than $50, $100, or $500. Everything here is available in plain English from this drop-down wizard, no programming, no technical expertise necessary. We want to make this query so that it can be used for different invoice balances. Maybe one person needs to be notified about invoices that are greater than $100. Someone else needs to be notified about invoices that are past due and for more than $500 or $1,000 or $10,000. So we're actually designing this one query so it can be used in multiple events, each event specifying a different dollar threshold. Our second and only other filter for this query is simply checking to make sure that the invoices are overdue. So you can see here, we're specifying that the invoice's due date is less than the current date. That's all we need to do. If we wanted to exclude certain customers, we could add additional columns to filter on. And down at the bottom right of this window, a very useful little button, if column values have changed. Maybe you want to trigger an alert if anyone has the audacity to change the due date of an invoice. And simply by coming here, in here and choosing invoice due date, you're telling alerts and workflow to immediately begin auditing the value in this field. Alerts and workflow will automatically capture both the old value and the new value of any field or fields that were changed. Now, just in case we have anyone technical on the phone with us today, and uh, maybe you've already written your own SQL syntax, or you have your own stored procedures that you simply want alerts and workflow to execute. Can you do that? You sure can. 
you can come right in here to the SQL tab and specify your own SQL syntax. Personally, I don't know how to write SQL syntax. So I always like coming in here and highlighting all of this wonderful code and saying, this is what I don't have to know what to do in order to create my own queries and events in alerts and workflow. Let's test this query to see what results we get. Let's look for any invoices that are past due and have an outstanding balance of at least $500. Here are my results. We can see our invoice date, the due date. Wow, these are not only past due, they're egregiously past due. And we can scroll over to the right a little bit to check the balance to make sure, yes, indeed, they're all greater than $500. So our query looks like it's functioning as needed. Let's now move ahead and take a look at the rest of the components of an event. Next on the list are the alert messages or the content or deliverables that you want to send someone when and if these conditions, i.e. overdue invoices, prove true. Now this event is configured to send alerts and other content via a number of different ways, email and fax and text message and dynamic web dashboard. Let's take a look at one of these. Let's go into our instant alert message and let's actually edit this message. Once again, everything in alerts and workflow is based upon security. Only those people whom you want to have the ability to edit or create alert messages will have the ability to do so. Here we're sending an instant message alert that says uh, we've got an invoice number for a particular customer that has a balance of, and we're showing the balance amount, and we're showing the invoice's due date. That seems to be a pretty valuable little message. What I'm not seeing here is the actual date of the original invoice. So let's say dated. Let's look for our invoice date field. There it is. Let's double click on it, add it here, and add ourselves in a blank space. And that's as easy as it gets when it comes to creating or editing alert messages. Can you get more sophisticated than that? Absolutely, you sure can. Maybe you want to send someone an email, but you want it to be formatted in a, in a somewhat sophisticated way. We support the use of HTML formatted emails, which of course brings up the question, well, does that mean I need to know how to write HTML syntax? And the answer is no because alerts and workflow ships with a library of HTML templates to choose from. You choose those templates and then you simply drag and drop or select the corresponding fields of data that you wish to appear in that alert message. Now, if I move this window over to the left a little bit and take a look again at the list of deliverables here, you'll see that in addition to the ones we've looked at, this event is also triggering a report. It's actually regenerating my invoice form for the invoices that are past due. Let's have a quick look at that. Over on the reports tab, I can see that the very first report specified here is my Crystal Reports invoice form. I've chosen to have alerts and workflow generate that invoice in PDF format, and naturally, I want alerts and workflow to generate these forms only for those invoices that meet this event's criteria are overdue. And that's exactly what alerts and workflow is doing here. But in addition to generating and delivering invoices to customers for uh, their overdue uh, invoices, this particular event is also generating a graph. And this graph is showing me overdue invoices total, and I can actually look up here to the right and see that it is per rep. Let's have ourselves a look uh, at this particular chart. So I'm just gonna go back to my main window here, click on edit, and bring up this chart. So overdue invoices per sales rep, it's a 3D bar chart. It's showing me my currency. Let's do a quick uh, view of this chart. So here we can see I've got four sales reps in my Sage 100 database, and one of them in particular, Shelly, uh, needs to do a better job of collecting uh, payments from her delinquent customers, over half a million dollars worth of past due invoices. Now the chart that you see here can be embedded within an email alert message, it can be sent as an attachment, it can be posted to a website, or simply delivered 
uh, to an FTP site. So a number of different ways this information can be delivered. It's just important to know that whatever the format of the information that's going to have the biggest impact and the most meaning for your recipients, you can configure that to be sent automatically by alerts and workflow. Notice here at the very bottom of our list of deliverables, we're even having alerts and workflow pick up a Microsoft Word document, which contains instructions on how customers can automatically pay off their delinquent invoices through an online bill payment method. Okay, so we've identified our triggering condition and our content, our alerts, reports, and charts that we want the system to automatically generate for us. The next logical step is to specify whom we want that content to be delivered to. Alert recipients are referred to as subscribers in alerts and workflow, and this event has four. The first two, you can see we're notifying everyone in our finance group, as well as myself. And you'll notice that for each individual or group of recipients, you can choose to notify them via any one or any combination of alerts and workflows delivery methods. For our finance group, we're actually notifying them via not only email, but also fax and also instant message. Myself, <clears throat> pardon me, I've chosen to be notified via just two methods, email and instant message. Notice when I cursor over my name here, a little window pops up that says, oh, by the way, Don, there's also an alternate email address for you, which is your Gmail address. I like to point this out because for me at least, if I need to get notified Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., I get notified at my work email address. But if I need to get notified after work hours on Saturdays or Sundays or 2 o'clock in the morning, then alerts and workflow is intelligent enough to say, aha, Don's got a different delivery address based upon the time of day or day of the week. And therefore, if it's outside of work hours, we're going to notify him at his Gmail email address. Having said that, for this event, in my opinion, the two most important subscribers are these last two. If you think about it, if you've got customers with overdue invoices, the two most important people to notify are the customer themselves and the salesperson responsible for that customer. These are referred to as dynamic delivery addresses because naturally they're going to change based upon which invoices are overdue. Now the last component of an event, and before I go into that, let me just uh, mute myself so I can clear my throat. <coughs> That's a bit better. Appreciate your indulgence there. The last component of an event is its workflow action. So what do we want this event to do, if anything, in addition to sending out alerts, delivering forms, documents, reports, charts, and graphs? Well, maybe we're working with a collections agency, and they've told us at the end of every week, we want you to generate a nice, perhaps comma-separated file of all of your customers' overdue invoices so we, the collections agency, can initiate collection proceedings with them. Or maybe you're using a sales or CRM application like Sage CRM and you think, well, if we're sending out notices to customers who are past due, we should also go into our corresponding CRM or sales application and actually schedule a phone call for the appropriate sales rep to make to that client on the next business day. As you can see from just the four selections here, the workflow actions that are possible within Sage Alerts and Workflow are a combination of some wizard-driven actions and some programmatic actions. In fact, alerts and workflow can do such things as run custom programs. It can uh, execute visual basic scripts, run stored procedures, SQL inserts and updates. And in a version coming out later this year, we'll have the ability also to call web services. But an important note about all of these actions, and that is we consider writing data back into one or more applications as a very sensitive procedure. Only certain individuals should have the authority to do so. So above and beyond the normal authorizations that allow you to control who can access alerts and workflow, this actions branch has its own 
separate authorizations, kind of a double layer of security controls to make sure that only the appropriate people with the appropriate expertise and responsibility can configure these workflow actions. Okay, so before we jump back into our PowerPoint, just to finish up our conversation today, just a few other things I'd like to show you in this tour of the application. Alerts and workflow automatically ships with collections of what we call dashboard alerts. These are dynamic web pages that are automatically updated by the system. So if you've got someone up in accounting and they want a window up that simply shows them a list of all customers who are at least 90 days past due, you've got it. If you've got uh, someone down in shipping, for example, who wants to have a window up that simply shows them a list of all orders that are due to be shipped today, or all pending back orders that uh, are waiting um, a delivery of a specific purchase order, they could have that up as well. Below that, we've got a number of different branches of our ERP application. I just want to stop for a moment here down at the last one for ERP called SO, or Sales Order Trends. I've talked about using alerts and workflow for trend analysis. I just want to show you an example of how powerful this can be. What we've got here is an event that is designed to run on the first day of every month. Let me walk you through what it does. This event on the first day of every month looks to see what each customer purchased for the month just ended, the last month. And then this event goes an additional six months back for each customer to calculate what each customer's average monthly purchases is based upon that six months of history. And then this event compares for each customer what they purchased last month versus what their average monthly purchases is. And if a client's sales have dropped by at least 30% versus their average month, Alerts and Workflow is going to trigger an email alert message going to the appropriate sales reps that says the following. Hello, salesperson. This customer of yours has placed orders for the previous month to date that represents a decrease of at least 30% over their average month. And we're showing just four fields of data, but oh, how valuable those fields are. We're showing for a specific customer, their last month's sales total, their average monthly sales total, in this case, based upon the preceding six months of activity, and their decrease, represented both as a dollar amount and as a percentage. How valuable would that be for a salesperson to have waiting for them when they get to their desk on the morning of the first day of every month? Okay. So let's jump back into our PowerPoint just so that we can finish up this presentation and also leave just a couple of moments, a couple of minutes, excuse me, for some Q&A. I think it's worth asking yourself, who is it within and connected with your organization who can benefit from the alerts and workflow that this system can produce? And what you rapidly realize is that it's everybody. It's your own staff. It's folks in accounting, shipping, sales, it's your executives, but it goes beyond that to affecting your customer with order confirmations, invoices, um, order reminders if they've gone more than X number of days without placing an order from you. And of course, communications also out to your vendor and suppliers, placing purchase orders with them, asking them to confirm delivery dates of placed orders. So the answer to this really is everybody can benefit from your implementation of alerts and workflow. And one final note that I want to share with you, and that is that although we've focused today on what alerts and workflow can do specifically for your Sage ERP application, please keep in mind that alerts and workflow also integrates with all of your other business applications. Do you have other applications from Sage, such as Sage CRM, Sage HRMS, uh, or other apps? Do you have applications from other vendors? Uh, do you have applications that are add-on solutions to your Sage ERP system, such as Sage Inventory Advisor, Sage Enterprise Intelligence, or a whole litany of add-on solutions? Well, Alerts and Workflow integrates with those solutions as well, and it even integrates with other solutions. 
solutions from other vendors not associated with Sage. Maybe you even have one or more homegrown applications or databases that would benefit from being monitored and responded to by alerts and workflow. This is truly an enterprise-wide monitoring and response technology. So although we're focused today on what it can bring to Sage ERP, do keep in mind that it certainly goes beyond those confines. So, in summary, if you'd like to get more information about alerts and workflow, please feel free to go out and visit the alerts and workflow website. I'll take you to that as soon as we're finished on the current slide. On that website, you'll see something called the needs assessment. This allows you to actually um, take five to 10 minutes only to see if Sage Alerts and Workflow can benefit your organization and what parts of your organization can benefit the most based upon your current business needs. If you decide to move ahead with purchasing Sage Alerts and Workflow, it's ordered through ISM, your partner. Everything is coordinated through them and through SAGE. So you're not having to deal with multiple service and, and maintenance contracts. It's all bundled right with your SAGE ERP application. And please note that your SAGE partner, ISM, has been trained and certified on the alerts and workflow technology. That means that we've certified their expertise in the product, they've completed certain required courses, and they have a history of successful implementations of alerts and workflow. And so, honestly, you could not be in better hands than with the good folks at ISM. Now, I did promise that I'd take you out to the Alerts and Workflow website, so let's do that now. But before, I just want to show you a sample alert. Uh, earlier on, I talked about alerts going out via email, via web dashboard, etc. This is one of those web dashboards. Uh, for my purposes, I call it the business snapshot because this gives me a quick view of critical business activities within my organization. Whether it's looking at sales totals per customer, products that are not selling well the current month, or even just a listing of today's sales orders. So this is just an example of one alert that you can get from the alerts and workflow technology. Now, let's go out and take a look at the Sage Alerts and Workflow website. From here, you can get additional details about the product. I mentioned that, for example, with Sage 100, the product ships with over um, 85 pre-configured business conditions. If you wonder what those 85 are, you can just drill down into Sage 100, and over on the right-hand side of your window, you'll see a button called List of Included Events. And then finally, if we just jump back to our main window here for one final moment, Right in the middle of this homepage, does your organization need alerts and workflow? Click here to find out. That will launch the alerts and workflow needs assessment tool. As I mentioned, only about five to 10 minutes of your time is required to find out what parts of your organization could most benefit from Sage alerts and workflow. So with that, let me stop talking, give everyone else for a change. Sherry, I'm going to turn the proceedings back over to you for now. If we have any questions that have come in via chat or elsewhere, I'll be more than glad to answer them. Hi, Don. Thank you so much for that presentation. What a great product that is. I could use that in my home life as well. Um, so uh, we have no questions today. No questions have come in. So with that, I will thank you for your time. I will end the broadcast. And please know that this is up on the ISM YouTube channel for future viewing. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.